morning the right way. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be a good day. This is Jason Lauren on Melbourne's Nova 100. Well, good morning everybody and welcome to your Monday. Good morning, it is a foggy old Monday out there, yeah. so please be careful if you are on the roads this morning. Yes, very much. Visibility is low. Take it easy out there. Hey, uh, it was last week we had all eyes on the Qantas hangar as our athletes came home. I know, it wasn't that a special day. Oh, Roll out the choir again, because look who's back from Patty. <laughs> back on home soil. Oh, Mr. Thanks, Clint Stanaway. Oh, can, we just, can we just listen to and appreciate the choir for a second? But no matter. Oh. They sang it about four times that morning as the athletes came How soothing is it? I know. Thanks for the warm welcome. Well, Hello, you're, Melbourne. You're, yes, I'm back safely. You're well, home, not in but Melbourne. You're not home. No. You're in Australia, but you're in Sydney. Just thought I'd tease it out a little further. No, I went to the Logies last night. TV's night of nights. TV's night of nights. How is TV's night of nights? It was, uh, it was long. I- <laughs> That's not how you described it to me just before we went to where. You went, thank God I didn't drink last night. <laughs> God, it was boring, Jason. You didn't drink. You are a changed I know. man, Clint Stanaway. I had a, a, a glass of Moet on arrival, oh, and then I just say no. Category A drugs? Like, what got you through? <laughs> oh, Bloody come hell. Come on. Oh, mate, it was a long night. I'm pretty Coke sure. Coke Zeros. Coke yeah, Zeros. Right. No, it was, it, what about that winner from uh, Boy Swallows Universe? Felix, I love Oh, my him. goodness. I fell as- How's this? I fell asleep. <laughs> Because he won two Logies, and I fell asleep during his first speech, which was <laughs> the cutest thing you've ever heard. He was crying, thanking his brother and sister and his mum and dad. I fell asleep, and I woke up like two hours later, and I was like, Paul, is he still talking? He's and Paul back. was like, no, he's won another one. I'll tell you what's still going, the package for Rebecca Gibney into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, I missed that. Slip through. I was like, guys, oh, she's going to be dead if we don't move this along. Like, well, It just went on. And I, but don't get me wrong, she's done amazing work. Yes. But I was yeah, like, I want to hear from her. Hey, Jane, Jane Halifax. Well, her son delivered a beautiful oh. speech as well. I, do you know what? I teared up twice. Rebecca so maybe it was the fact that I wasn't drinking. Rebecca <laughs> Gibney's son did. Yeah, he, he oh. presented the award. He's like, you know, to everyone else, she's Rebecca Gibney. To me, it's mum. Oh, and I was like, I'd oh. be gone. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I was sound asleep by that bit. I did see um, Guy Sebastian and Jessica mm. Mulboy do a tribute to John Farnham, which was great. They had bagpipes in the room. I loved the bagpipes, but I was like, was it a bit morbid? Well, mm, I just, like, they were It great. was referencing the doco, right? Oh, yeah, I because it 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 won, a, it won an award. Oh, there you go. I did see his the, beautiful sons were there. The best oh, good. doco. Robin. <laughs> Um, yeah. Let's get to the important stuff. Yes, uh, chicken and fish, or beef and chicken. What was oh. what was the dish? Was it? It looks like, it looks like a glamified wedding. I had a very strange main, Jace. I'm going to send you a photo right now. Okay. What was on the menu? So it was. I had a kingfish sashimi. Oh, yum, I love for, kingfish uh, sashimi. For entree. Yeah. Risky business serving kingfish sashimi in such a large quantity. It was followed mm. by. I got a. Like a lamb number. It oh, was yeah. either a fish or a lamb. I got the lamb, but have a look at your phones. I, hopefully that will come through shortly. It was a lamb which was painted... What? With a gold leaf. Like a gold logie. Like a it? gold logie. It was like a... Oh! Oh! It, oh, was, like a, <laughs> it was like a gold logie piece of meat. But why is it wrapped in something green as well? Looks like some sort of leprechaun has <laughs> pooed that out. It actually looks a bit like an Australian's returning from the Olympics with the green and gold. That's a no from me. Do you me. think it was a nod to the Olympics as opposed to the gold logie? I think it was a flip no, of the bird to the logie. Olympics, <laughs> not a nod. Oh, my God. It potatoes well cooked. It would be good to see Gastro rip through the logies, <laughs> bloody guest today. Oh. Wow. Um, also, sorry, I've just checked my messages. 10.53 p.m. I know. Proof of know. life, Clint walking in the door. Yeah, yeah. What's happened to you? What has happened to you? Are you jet lag? I'm just, do you know what? I am full of jet lag. You I, sound a bit sick oh, as well. Oh yeah, I hope I'm not getting crook, but it was it was a long campaign in Paris, um, and I want to be I wanted to be ready for this morning. We know that well, last year you You're sent me to the Logies, <laughs> and it just didn't breakfast. end very yeah. well, did it? Yeah. No, just I've never heard the word literally be rolled out <laughs> on, in the news so much on before in my life. Friday, when we were talking about whether <laughs> where you were going to be reading the news yes. this morning, I said, "Has someone told Clint we need him to read the news this year?" <laughs> because <laughs> last year he did one bulletin, and we had to pull it. Yeah, you didn't have his back in the meeting. I was like. Put him on the news. 
No, I was like, <laughs> someone has to tell him because we can't have him turn up thinking he's just here for a jolly good time and next minute he's telling the serious news. Yeah, also me. tell all the criminals this weekend not to get caught because Otherwise, he's going to call you why? guilty on Monday, let me tell you. <laughs> Oh, Clint, we're so happy to have you sort of <laughs> yeah, back mate. home. When do we see you? Tomorrow morning oh in the flesh. It's been and four I've got and a gift. Half weeks. <gasps> what, what time do you land? We should we should go to the airport and park. I land at I'm on a, an eleven o'clock flight, so what's that? About about twelve thirty? Hey Clint. Yeah. I just want you to think about this when you're on the plane, right? And you land mm. in Melbourne. Just so the anxiety kicks in. Are we waiting with a flash mob? <laughs> Are we? <laughs> a big cardboard. We're all gonna break dance. Break I'm not telling you what airline I'm flying. Oh, we know. It's the old bird. <laughs> <laughs> Have we ever discussed yet that Larry Emder won the gold? What? Oh, Sorry. no. No, no. Stand by. Larry. <laughs> I, I have audio. And the gold Logie goes to Larry Emder. 40 years I've been in this business. 40 years. And I did say that if I won this during the week, <laughs> I did say, I was so convinced that I wasn't going to win this that I said and that if I did win it, I would have all the nominees' initials tattooed on my ass live tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, well, I was well and truly asleep by that, but we better throw Channel 7 on and watch the morning show this morning. He said uh, in his speech also that he, through his career, has been sick and tired of people screaming from the other, other side of the road, Come on down, wanker! <laughs> yeah, I heard that. <laughs> That's how we introed him last week when he was on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down, you wanker! You know what? I well love done, it. Larry. Yeah, I good love on Larry. Larry. Like, I would have been a bit of nose out of joint if Irwin won. Yeah. You know, he's the first year in TV and everything. Larry's done the hard <laughs> At time. Sam Pang, I mean, we'll talk about it a bit later. Sam Pang, that initial roast at the start of the Logies was very funny. It was good, wasn't it? Very funny. His in memoriam was even funnier. About Ray Ma. Well, no, well, when it, no, he, he did an in memoriam, a version where it basically remembers the shows that are, oh. have, bite, have bit the dust, oh. like gladiators. Oh, yes. I was you asleep by that. You know what, too. Pang, you'd love even more? Listening to people retell his jokes the yeah. next morning and not, yeah. not execute it. Delivering them in a <laughs> shit way. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, look, we've got a huge show coming up today. We uh, also had a very special guest on the red carpet reviewing the outfits that we're going to get to shortly. Yes, uh, you're going to hear that in about the next 20 minutes. Gogglebox got itself a new star who it did, did a Logie special. We've got the exclusive audio. Not only that, Melbourne whispers, all the hottest rumours around town coming up a little bit later on. Harry Garside's going to join us. He's going to be popping in. And thanks to our mates at DFO. They've got the brands you crave. Uh, you're in the know with DFO. You can visit dfo.com.au. I love DFO. We have $1,000 cash to drop every day this week. Goes a long way there. Absolutely. You can pretty much buy the franchise. All you have to do is listen out for the mystery code word or code words. We will drop between now and 6.30. When you hear us say DFO Essendon. DFO Essendon. That's not it. DFO Essendon. No, no, no. Okay, no, 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 no. no. From, from now. From now. When we say... No, I swear I to God, Lauren. <laughs> DFO. No. When you hear us drop out what I just said, then you give us a ring, then you score a thousand bucks. In the next 30 minutes, 13, 24, 10, if you hear us say it. Not yet. Not yet. We'll do it between now and 6.30. All right, coming up next, guys, an event happened here in Melbourne on Friday night. It changed my life, and next time it's on, you have to go. Guys, oh, we must go. We Where must. Are we heading? Friday night, Dad left the suburb. I went out. You and I are just not in sync. We're not, are we? No, the nights you decide you're going to go out, I can't, and vice versa. We're when not meant to socialise together. No. When you say you left your suburb, though, I mean... When you leave your suburb, because where are you? You're in... I'm in Bentley and I so went to... So you go to Bentley East. Yeah, he goes to the suburb next door. That's yeah, living normally, normally I go to the McKinnon Hotel. Great little front bar there. This time, Dad jumped in an Uber and went all the way to 170 Russell. That's right. Billboards. Into the city. In, billboards? <laughs> he went to what Billboards. You, the last time the I went... club? To, last time I went to Billboards, I snuck in underage <laughs> for New Year's Eve. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever been. I'll give you a hot tip. I don't think the club's changed much since then, Loz. Great. It terrific. was the host venue for Bingo Loco. Which is the best way to describe is like a night of bingo on acid. It is crazy. It looked crazy. So like, Imagine, right, so the whole dance floor, right, a Billboard's nightclub, had all the trestle tables laid out. I saw that photo. So it is just like trestle tables. It is like trestle tables like a bingo, Loss. At the RSL. Yep, as you're walking in, you get handed your bingo card, 
And then, just like at the Taylor Swift concert, a clock starts counting down on the main screens to, oh, to what officially start. starts. How many people are we talking? Oh, I reckon 350. 350? Close to 400. Mate, they had over 1,000 in uh, the Gold Coast the other week. That's too many. It was heaving. Okay, so the whole team went. I couldn't go. Uh, I was on dog-sitting duty. Sick dog came home. Cute, but I couldn't venture out. Well, yeah. when that clock went zero and it started... You think you know someone. I look up to the stage and our host for Bingo Loco was none other than producer Jizz. Melbourne Bingo Loco, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> shake, shake that yeah. bar, let's make it. Woo! You were in, I got photos and videos. Lauren. <laughs> the worst outfit I've he, ever seen. He is red food in disguise. <laughs> oh my God, you're like Irish so red food. Is this, a, is this a side hustle, Jazz? Yeah, pretty much. This is my little side hustle. I've worked for Bingo Loco because it's an Irish company. So oh. I worked for them at home even before I moved here. And it's been up and running here in Australia for a few years. We run gigs across the world as well in the UK, in America. Gigs? Yeah. Uh, it, shows like Bingo Lauren, Loco shows. Did you ha- do you have to wear that outfit you wore, or did you pull that no, no, fresh no. from your wardrobe? He did an outfit change halfway through. Because <laughs> at one point, I saw you standing on a table ha- holding a giant uh, adult toy appendage. Oh. Well, that, that, that was the prizes. If you got bingo. Who won? Did you win? No, 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 no some hen's party. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> but some of our prizes, you're right, go from some free booze to cuddly toys to a guitar. The star prize on the night is a holiday. But one of our favourite prizes... to wear? Uh, it varies. Sometimes to Bali, sometimes it's a voucher for you to choose your yeah. own. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we is don't, this we a don't new mess improved ar- prices, right? Yes. Style, we right? don't mess around. But you're right, like one of our star <laughs> prizes on the night is... The Bingo Loco dildo. Think fast, love. <laughs> what a catch. <laughs> she caught it. Yeah, it's the Bingo Woo! Loco dildo. People go crazy. Does it glow in the dark? Does it glow in the dark? Oh, Does probably. St- <laughs> sticks on probably. the desk. Probably. I yeah. don't know. Tell you what, she caught it with one hand and left she shoved it on that desk with one hand. Bloody the up. left hand. <laughs> You don't trade it like this. So it's a, it's a, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. Tell you what, if you, you treat balls like that, then can we get a welfare check on him? <laughs> Uh, t- so the the team came. Jace is fresh out of the box. This um, can oh, I can I just not say necessarily. for three hours he had the crowd in the palm of his hand. How and, good! And he's not only up there alone. Can you do your your intro spear when you intro everyone on? Because he has. Have you got a cast? Yes, we've got so, a full ensemble. So hey, I'll play got music our, and yeah. do you do. All right, introducing our Bingo Loco hype crew, our dancers. They're going to be there, and our DJ for the night, DJ Pete the Beast. <laughs> And now, Loz, I know you think that might be big. I have got something bigger for you. When someone oh. gets a bingo... I have got something bigger for on, you. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Bingo! We have a bingo! Shake that bottle and make it... Woo! Woo! Confetti cannons go off. Oh, my God. Streamers come down. I was like... Clint. I was like, excuse me, I paid $11 for this vodka lime and soda, and now it's full of confetti. <laughs> <laughs> Industrial size confetti cannons. Do you have uh, to go to the bar to get a drink? Yeah. Uh, so no, no, no. But so you'd be playing bingo. It's so insane. You'd be like, all right, number two, and everyone's like doing number two. Yeah. And then he'd be like, all right, and number three, and then all of a sudden everything will pause, and DJ Pete will just blast off a party banger. Everyone drops their bloody markers and gets to uh, their yeah. feet and dances. Is yeah. DJ Pete your hot Irish friend? Yes. Does he do it too? He's hot sexy Pete. Irish Pete. Yeah. Hot Pete. Sexy Irish Pete who um, <sighs> filled in for me one time. He's DJ yeah, Pete we the wish, Beast. We wish you'd never come back when sexy Irish <laughs> Pete know. was here. Well, you hey, have to come and see him at Bingo. Yeah, we Question, will. Question, are there hookups at the Bingo? Local? No, no, no. It gets competitive, Clint. <laughs> Oh, there's really? no hookups. There's like oh. people. Well, and did you have to share a table with other people or all our friends? Yeah, no, no. We shared it with all our crew and okay. um, no strangers. I don't want to name and shame him, but Nandos, our video guy. <laughs> well, right. I was getting texts from Nandos. Well, you imagine right? A giant you must come out, and I was like, Nandos, <laughs> I am in a track suit on the couch because he's, go he's got a he's got a one year old, so him and I like dad's Dad gone out. wild. And any time you go to the bar, you'd buy a couple because you don't want to keep getting up. So the whole table's covered in drinks. <laughs> and then what does Nandos do? He hits the leg of the trestle table What's and it that? drops. Oh, <laughs> oh Nandos. It was like a flood rolled in the bloody oh, the, Russell all the, Street. All the confetti would have been soggy. Oh, for not for ten bucks a drink, Dad was on the floor with a straw. <laughs> Gen, Z, like a Gen Z did that last time we were out. Now it's Nandos's oh, turn. No. Hey Clint, I find it hard to believe they had this much fun without you and I there. I know. We must go. We must, we must go. go. We When's must. the next one? Uh just before Halloween.
All oh. the details <laughs> at Bingo Loco AU on Instagram. That sounds like someone's got a costume ready. Oh, the Halloween shows are always big. Are they? You should yeah. get down That's to DFO Essendon and get a little cheap little outfit. That's there. a good idea, actually, yeah. Not even in spirit, but actually fully here is Clint uh, in Sydney. <laughs> Semi fresh after the Logies last night. Uh, what time did you get in? 10.45 or 10.50. I don't yeah. know if I'm proud or disappointed. Yeah, I'm a bit the same. Who was on your table? Uh, we had the Today Show crew. So, like, Alex Cullen, who's hosting the show this yep. morning. Jane has a party. Sophie Where, Walsh, my weekend Carl? colleague. Yeah, where's Carl? Carl didn't go. He's celebrating his 50th birthday back in Europe. So, he's jumped back on a plane I heard to go to Europe. he was in the south of France. Yeah. And he, was, uh, none of the Channel 9 crew invited to the party? To the 50th. Yeah, no, I, think it's, I think it's a boys, boys, boys. Lads, lads, lads. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I think. How good. Well, so, yeah. I was watching the Logies Red Carpet, yeah. and I thought you looked... You and Sophie Walsh, best-dressed couple there, if you ask oh, me. You, you new host on Weekend Today. You have to today. say that. No, I thought she looked great. I thought Kate Ritchie looked amazing. She, she did, didn't she? She looks looks absolutely stunning. Sensational. Yeah. Um, but sitting on the couch with me last night was our mm. Red Carpet critic, my fiancé, Paul. Sorry, hang on. I'm just trying to think. What experience has Paul got in he the fashion world? He wears jeans, R.M. Williams, and a Ralph Lauren t-shirt every day, and that's it. Yeah, well, that's he's, he's very works, credible. He's worked for some entertainment company before doing... No, that's right, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and... <laughs> but how were you dressed? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, good question. We were sitting on the couch in our leisure wear. Okay. Um, because we had walked the dog before dinner, before we sat down. Yep. So, uh, Paul was wearing black Nike shorts and a black t-shirt. Food on his lap? Uh, were you reading on the couch? No, we'd finished TV, dinner. Yeah. We ate dinner. We had a dinner early, so right. we were ready for TV's Night of Night's Red Carpet. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. First of all, we had it on Channel 9. We had it on the wrong channel, nearly missed the star. We're Jesus watching, Christ. We were watching the block, and I was like, hang on a second. Why is Scotty this, Cam walking the red carpet in a tool belt? This ain't Sonia and Chris Brown, although they do it quite well, because on oh, the Channel Sonya 9 News, it, they she? almost trick you to think that the Logies are coming up, so they got yeah. us. Anyway, we flipped it across to seven for the start of it, and Paul, my fashion critic fiance I can't wait. was very excited. This is Paul Lawrence fiance Gogglebox star. Oh, what's the name of that show? At the Logies with Paul. Night of nights. Oh, there's uh, Irwin. I don't know that guy. Oh, wow. Good wheels. Don't know them. No, never seen them like that. Which out of these two is going to get the most maggot, you reckon? <laughs> well, he's dressed perfectly for a funeral. All black. Top to Chris Brown. Oh, and Sonia. She's dressed by Cirque du Soleil. So they wear a Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> no, it'd be, it would be Rebecca Valance because that's the only one I know. <laughs> Emily from Home and Away has come straight off the beach of the set of Home and Away. Because she is still wearing her swimwear. <laughs> oh, there's Alf, Stuart. Sensation. There's a girl wearing nothing. Oh, my God, the whole wiggle's there. I do not recognise one because not one of them is wearing a skivvy. Asher Ketty, beautiful. Then another lady. Oh, Rachel Griffiths, old school. Amazing, looks great in a tuxedo. Asher Ketty, amazing in the black and white with some um, curly snake earrings. Looks incredible. I don't know. I don't know what I don't even think that goes with the dress, but it looks good. Andy, Lee, and Rebecca Harding, two of my faves. She looks amazing in pink. I don't know why he's wearing yellow sunglasses, but cool. Um, incredible. Could win the uh, gold logie, I feel, for his show, one to uh, 1,000. Can I get a wrap up of your red carpet thoughts? I think they did their best for the 30 minutes, and now they're just going to go and get on the piss. So no one really cares what they're wearing. <laughs> Bit there to unpack go. there. Um, well Beautifully done, Paul. Gone, Paul. You know what? I sort of agree with the Cirque du Soleil outfit. It looked like she had a cape. <laughs> it did look like well, she had a cape. Andy it was Lee? A, sleeve, a sleeve number, wasn't it? Right. And Andy Lee in yellow sunglasses. He had like gold sunglasses with gold lenses walking the red carpet like Elvis. Mm. Beck looked beautiful, though. Emily He's Simons, who is Marilyn from Home and Away. She was sitting on the table opposite me. Gee, hasn't she wound back the clock? You reckon she's had a bit of a oh. bit of work? Really? Good she on her. She was looking fresh. There wouldn't be any Botox left in the country after everyone getting ready for the Logies, I would have thought. Could have eaten your entree off their forehead. It was that small. Also, on the on the table opposite me was Ada Nicom- Nicodemu, and she's, she used last night to unveil the new boy. Oh, James who Stewart. Who also stars yes. in the show. 
That's Paul right. Paul actually yes. referenced that, but I don't think he could spit out Nicodemu properly. He was like, Ada Nick. How um, Do they get a warm reception rolling out they the did. naughty relationship? But every time they got up to, you know, they they went to the toilet together. Um, every time they got up from their table, every eyeball was on them. Really? Wait, every time they got up, they walked to the bathrooms together. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a new couple. We've got to hold hands everywhere we Hot go. Hot couple alert. Otherwise, Any, uh, they'll get a photo and say, Aiden Nicodemus storms off leaving. Oh, yeah. What's his name at the table at the Logies? There's always... Uh, What's his some, name? What is his name? James Stewart. James is Stewart. Yeah. James Stewart. Two first Stewart. names. Um, Such never a trust a person name. with two first names. Always some young home and away or neighbour star going to the toilet a lot throughout the evening, back and forth, back and forth. Was there any mm. of those? Drinking lots of water, staying hydrated. Just of course, yeah, yes. Extra hydrated, that's right, yes. Jace. Yep, yep. yep. Not Who was the worst meal. behaved, Clint? Well, I left early. I bailed early. Did you did not you make the, it till the end? Did you did you do the after party? No, no, no. I watched the gold logie from my... From my boudoir. Are you, you serious? You didn't even make it to Larry no. winning gold. No, oh. I, I got over What did there. you say? Back in a I sec. Said, I said, I said, I've got to do Nova breakfast in the morning. And I was a disgrace last year. I'm going home. <laughs> well, finally, we agree on something. He was a disgrace <laughs> last year. 13 24 10 is our number. We want to know, have you made a costly mistake at work? How much did a balls up of yours cost your business? Because there has been a big boo-boo here in Melbourne. The state government um, has recently splashed out $234 million on railway station upgrades with one <laughs> one platform being built 10 metres too short. Sorry? So... <laughs> what do you mean? I've got to do a 10... 10- Ten meter leap, or no, no, no. Well, it's actually the trains are ten meters longer than they've oh, built too the long. platform. They don't fit. Oh, they so don't if you're fit. on like the the last carriage, you just fall. You're straight getting out. out on the tracks. Yeah, that train ain't stopping at that station anymore. Oh, this sounds like a demountable table job. They're calling it the quarter of a billion dollar cock up <laughs> because that's a big <laughs> mistake. So basically, the train carriages are now two hundred and fifty five meters long, but Deer Park Station, which has just been rebuilt, yep. is only two hundred and fifteen meters long. Do you reckon they so measured it with the uh, measuring app on the iPhone? Because yeah, I always wonder if that's accurate, that No, thing. what they did, they just took steps. You know, like gotcha. my oh, dad's yeah. always done this. He swears his step is one metre long. We just moved into a new place. My wife did that. She was like, I reckon uh, the TV will fit in this cabinet. And she put her hands on either side of the TV and then walked across the room <laughs> and pushed her hands together so it fit the cabinet. I'm like, that's not how it that works. That ain't it. Yeah, my dad's like one, two, when we were trying to buy sofas and stuff for our new house. I reckon that's how they did it. Just the old step count. So how much is that costing us? Does it say? Well, they're going to have to extend it. Um, but yeah. no, there's no cost on that being uh, rebuilt. But at this stage, yeah, the whole project was a quarter of a, a billion of dollars. A billion. Question. Like a like a public toilet, you know when you go in, do you go the furthest cubicle along? Like when you're getting on the train, would you be going the last carriage? Yeah, lots of people do the last carriage. Do they? Well, wherever yeah. the exit is, don't you? Yeah. You try and get on where you're getting off. Well, in this case, you've got to get a boost. I used to get the on yeah, not there. right where the gates were because you yeah. just didn't want to have to walk too far after school. You know what I find fascinating? Those videos online of when they cram the people in over in China to get them on the plane, oh, uh, on the trains. It's amazing. Oh. They fully push you in. Yep. And exhale. We can get three more in here. Although the way people um, conduct themselves in Japan, getting on and off trains and being on trains, it's silent. Everyone is like, what, like so a giant polite. Elevator? So quiet, yeah, 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 yeah. Like here, we're loud and obnoxious, and people put their feet on the seats. You wouldn't be doing that in Japan. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Costly mistakes at work. Surely someone's done a bit of a stuff up on the job site. I know I've crashed a few promotion vehicles in my time. Did you ruin them? Yeah, yeah. There was one day I backed it into a wall outside a chemist warehouse. We we're out recording something, <laughs> and I forgot that we still had the recording gear going in the car. And our production guy had to pull me aside a couple of days later and go, hey, do you want me to delete this audio? And it's me going, <gasps> do, 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 bang. Oh. <laughs> let's t- and you hear me on tape go, let's just put the car back. And I'll think it was the people before us that did oh, it. Oh, God. I drove well, a, um, a camper van once for postcards. We were doing like a camping episode and I got the big camper van was my story. Surprise, oh, surprise. I wasn't in the tent. And they were like, you've just got to drive it just one lap around the caravan park so we can film it. And I went straight under a low-hanging tree. Took like the whole top of the caravan off. It really oh. was, really was bye for now, wasn't it? Yeah, it was bye for now to the roof of the caravan. Wow. Do you remember when they made me court reporter at Channel 9 and I said someone was guilty instead of <gasps> not guilty? How much did that cost? I'm detecting a theme with your reporting clip. <laughs> <laughs> I should shut up, shouldn't I? 13, 13 24, 10 is our number.
Um, in return, I've got $200 Kogan vouchers up for grabs. Kogan helps you get what you want for less. Kogan.com. Now, that is clicking awesome. Biggest stuff up you've had at work. Give us a yell. Feel free to dob someone in as well. We are talking workplace stuff ups here on Nova. Uh, we built a brand new train station here in Melbourne. However, we didn't build it big enough. It's 10 metres short, Chase. Some of the trains don't fit. <laughs> well done, guys. It's- Maybe the trains are getting longer. No. Well, no. the platforms are getting shorter. A and a little column B. But the Deer Park <laughs> train station, which was part of a quarter of a billion dollar upgrade on our train system here, is 10 metres too short to fit some of the trains. Well, David's in Deer Park. Dave, hope you're not getting the train to work this morning, mate. No, I'm not, mate. Working from home, thankfully. Good man. There you go. What uh, biggest workplace stuff up? What'd you do? Um, so I work for a financial institution in remediation, right? So we basically, I'm the good guy of the bank. I pay people back. Great. And uh, I made a payment one day, or was, let's call it a Monday, uh, to people to pay them back for the stuff up. And then the next day I didn't realise that I paid those same people. And instead of paying about 200000 I paid $800,000 oh. across about 3,000 people. Oh. <laughs> now, Dave, do you, do you get the was, money back? Yeah, if I was the one that got the money, for me, I'd be like, sorry, that's on Dave. Yeah, I got it. I already spent it. Yeah, so that's actually how we found it. We had some good good people, call them good people, actually call up and say, hey, you guys already paid me. And that's when we <sighs> realised that we stopped. So they ruined it for everybody. Do you get in trouble uh, for that, Dave? Uh, no, because like, I found a solution and ended up getting majority of it back. We only lost about 10 grand, which we were happy to write off. But Yeah, What's because it? they say in banks when they do their like whatever you call it at the end of the month or whatever, there's reconciliation. All reconciliation. Splash there's sale. always like hundreds of thousands of dollars that's gone wrong. Because I've always thought if an ATM starts mean? going ape and spitting out cash, yeah, that's mine. Find yeah. us keepers. Well, you know, there's human error and you count cash and yeah. Oh, mate, balancing the till at David Jones back in the day <laughs> when I used to do it. <laughs> yeah, you that- don't want to be balancing the till at ANZ. Yeah. yeah the other <laughs> Are banks even open anymore though? Yeah, I believe so. They've got the concierge service. It always freaks me out. Some dude run up to me, hello, what are you here for? I'm like, I don't want a room. I just want to get money out. Yeah, mind your own business. Hello, Sean in Airport West. Guys, um, my stuff up was I was driving a work van full of wine oh, and no. went through a red arrow mm. and got T-boned by a guy who had just picked up his brand new car from Toyota. Oh. Oh. Sean, how was the Pinot? Yeah, what happened to wine? Every bottle in the van... Gone. <laughs> How much wine and was in there? And his brand new car he had for five minutes written off. Oh, God. Who cares about the car? Sean. How much wine was there in the cut van? Oh, probably 200 cases. <gasps> Jesus. Everyone was okay, though. All the humans ideal. were all right. That would have been a degrading photo of me licking the floor. Oh, no. That's sad, isn't it? Imagine it is. the red wine. It would be spilling out and it would it, it wouldn't be a good scene. I no. can't imagine. And then when the cops get there, because normally they breathalyse everyone, you're sitting there covered in Pinot rolling on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Allie I in swear the CPT. It wasn't, me. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me, man. Uh, what happened? Uh, I'm a teacher, and I was supposed to organise 20 bu- school buses for an athletics event for over a thousand kids. Oh, no. mm-hmm. And I did not order organise any of them, <laughs> so no one got to go to their athletic. What? Did you just forget? Was that like on your to-do list and you forgot? Yeah, it was definitely on my to-do list and just didn't get done. We're going to sure need... They can, they oh, can run. So yeah. they're all there in their school colours. We're going to need a lot of maxi cabs yeah. right now. This is actually cross-country event today, guys. We are running there. This happened to Aftercare. Um, at Aftercare for one of my kids during the school holiday program, they were going on excursions to the movies, get popcorn and choc tops. They forgot to book the bus. Oh, the Try telling kids so. that. Oh, here oh. you go. We're just going to watch it on this little TV. Everyone gather around. It's yep. home alone today. Yep. Have a look at the paddle pop and pass it on. Oh, no. Lisa, good morning. What did your colleague do? Morning, guys. How are we? We're good. We're good. So I work for an airline. I'm not going to say who. Yep. But I had cabin crew, disarm doors, whatever you need to do. And instead of disarming, they opened the door, which in hand popped the slide. Oh, also, oh, hang on. So when they yeah. say disarm doors, that means they they unclip the bottom. Disarm doors and cross-check? Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. can I just say, and I don't like how flippant you were saying, I work for the airline, and when we do that, disarm doors, and cross-check else thingy. Like, do. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I say too much, you like people you're, will pick up with airline. airline. Well, well, you're, well, you're too young to work for Qantas. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got her. All right, it is just gone. Oh, I've always to wanted seven. to go down the slide, though, but not in an emergency. Just want to try it. Just for fun. Yeah, surely they could just let us all have a hoon one day.
We've landed safely, but today you're exiting on the slide. Lauren would be the one that would take her on board, like carry on. Oh, yeah, she'd take everything. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, the laptop hit you. I wasn't going to leave that on board. Clint is doing the show from Sydney. He was in the room at the Logies last night. Just heard in your news there, Ray Gun sending Mm. a message. Mm. Inspirational. How'd it go down in the room? (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I was disappointed she wasn't there in the flesh, Jace. Yeah, so, well... I t- Would have loved to have seen her in a Logie's gown. I saw highlights saying, uh, some stuff online saying Ray Gunn's done an appearance at Logie's, and I was like, oh, that's great, that's good. Oh, yeah, I thought she was going to do a performance. That's no, what I thought. she's still in Europe, just having some downtime with her know, husband. <laughs> a lot of the videos that were sent in, like a montage of former sort of present uh, overseas presenters, I don't know if you caught them, they were all done via Cameo. Oh no! They actually no. paid like fifteen dollars. Yes. Are you ca- Fran, no Fran Fine to say hello? Sorry, the who who did a cameo? Oh, there was Ridge from um, what is it? Young and the Restless, Gold, Bold and the Beautiful. Bold, oh, yeah. what, one of them. Anyway, he was on cameo. Did and they, he did it got out his come, guitar. Did it have cameo written on the bottom? Yeah, line? it had the watermark in the top right corner. Oh cameo. my god! <laughs> How much do you reckon Ridge cost? And do you think he knew what he was actually doing? <laughs> Who else was on cameo? Surely he was a freebie thrown in for getting Ray Gun. Well, well, a few of them was, popped was up. Was Ray and Gun like, on cameo? Who is that? No, Ray Gun was on Zoom, I believe. Yeah. Oh my god! Was it? Oh, there's a there's a little Logie secret for you. That is hysterical. Well, look, speaking of secrets, <laughs> if you are sitting on a uh, rumor, hello about, Australia, <laughs> about something. Happy Logies. No, 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 fine. No, you always can tell when they get to the personal bit because they're like, "Hey, it's Ridge from Young and the Restless." Hello, Logie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for supporting us. Happy birthday. How much do you reckon Logie. Ridge costs on Cameo? We'll search 100 for 100 bucks. I Jesus. reckon. Um, he's probably pumped out a freebie for the Arias. Well done, Channel 7. What a win for the Pies on the weekend. Morning, everyone. Just gone 13 past 7. Told you we're still in with a chance. Yes. You know chance. Oh, God. You know what why? about Chase? I'm back on the Pies. Back you know why? Pies. You're such a fair weather supporter. I was screaming at that TV. Collingwood need to beat Melbourne next or well, this weekend by 200 plus points. Is that to the make only September, way? And then rely on Carlton falling over. Is that the only way we can make it? So there's a chance. Yeah, seriously, you could still beat the D's by 200. If yeah. only you were playing my Mighty Tigers, you'd, you'd be in. Damn it! I got ahead of myself. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, I got on them on the weekend when they were playing six Do bucks. You? Yep. Well done to the Pies. Were they only winning for two minutes of the game? Um, yeah, pretty much. It, it got right they down to the do end. that, don't they? I know, I know. But th- this time they didn't leave their comeback too late, which is mm. what we've done in the past. So nice job, guys. If we can do that again next year, we're on. Build with Mimosa Homes, an award-winning new home builder. Visit one of Mimosa Homes' 50 display homes across Metro Melbourne and Geelong. Hey, how you doing, little mama? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you might like, dear. Melbourne Whispers. I'm really gutted now. I actually thought we are in with a chance. But no, well, you're not out of it, but you know when you hear the, the you hear the phrase mathematical chance, you know that your season's cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to hear that a lot across the road. All right, um, <laughs> guys, this is Melbourne Whispers. If you have heard a juicy rumor, and our season was cooked. Oh yeah, about something or someone <laughs> in Melbourne. Give us a ring and. Uh, all thanks to Mimosa Homes V Collection. Homes starting from 199900 plus free site costs. Visit mimosahomes.com.au. Let's get to the whispers. Um, 13 24 10. It's Isabel from Flemington. Good morning. Good morning. All right, what do you got for Are us? You got a juicy rumour? Yes, I do. So the A League in Australia is combining with Japan and China to make an Oz Asia League. Really? The A League in Australia. So the soccer. So the A League for those, for those football of us. is combining with the J League in Japan, and I think it's called the Chinese Super League. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Are we not like I don't get it? Are we? We're pulling crowds and stuff, aren't we, Clint? At the A League? Um, no, I'm, no. Some clubs <laughs> do, like Melbourne Victory, pull good crowds yeah. generally, but they're I, probably. But this might seem like a stupid observation, but wouldn't like costs of the club go through the roof then? Because we'd have to be travelling overseas to play. Well, potentially. Yeah, the season's already very, very long. So, geez, this would elongate it further. But it might be interesting. Good for tourism. Rumor. We might get a whole heap of Japanese tourists and Chinese tourists who are here to watch yeah. their footy team, football team. Mm. I've got to get to a couple of games. They look fun. I love setting off a flare. Well, Do you the know Melbourne what? It's, Victory it, have that 
girl who plays the violin on the field, and they she's do. amazing, and they people get so into it. Yeah, see, that's they cool. Do. That's cool. All right. Um, 13, 20, 4, 10, if you're sitting on a, a hot little rumour in Melbourne, give us a call. Simon, good morning. Happy Monday, legends. Happy Same Monday. You. Um, I'm hearing that the weekend is finally going to come back to Australia and finish his tours that he keeps cancelling by the end of this year. He has cancelled that tour several times. So why why is he cancelled? Is that was that like born out of COVID or what was it? I'm not in that loop, sorry, Clint. Oh. Yeah, I think it was a COVID <laughs> situation. And but have you seen this stuff? Because there is a rumor going around Melbourne about this because of the Nilex building. Have you seen that's been lit up like a Christmas tree? I saw something on social on the yeah. weekends. Yeah, I saw it too. I, I saw the headline saying the Nilex building's lit up, and I was like, "Oh, fire! Finally got it!" Yeah. And then and then I <laughs> realised, "Oh no!" Have you seen that? No, but I heard it in um, in their promotions about it. So. Yeah. Oh, they think it's linked to the weekend. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so it's been lit up like orange, and it's got. Uh, I think it says, time, "Everything will fade, and the end is near." The They're Nilex projected, building, pr- like big projections in bright orange. All I'll over tell you the what, day. I can shed some light on that Ooh. rumor at seven thirty this morning. I will have an answer. Regarding the room now? because it's called hooking you through, Clint. What are you wow. doing here? Plus, I need to get the info, but I will have it for you. <laughs> at, Let's go with hook at seven thirty this morning. <laughs> Good hook. And remember, if you are sitting on a, a little rumor about something or someone here in Melbourne, uh, you can always give us a ring thirteen twenty four ten. We get them on the air every Monday for you. And like I said, yes, we'll get to the bottom of that rumor. Coming up at 7.30. <laughs> Next, though, i got to say, I want to sound proud, but I think I'm disappointed. Clint was home in bed last night before the gold logie was even read out. I can't believe you didn't stick it out till the end. I know. I'm disappointed in myself. However, I- when he did get on the shampoos, it was early in the night and he hit record on his iPhone <laughs> and caught up with some celebrities. So hopefully it's incriminating audio. We're going to take you inside the logies. What the stars were doing for... Three and a half hours before the telecast. That's insane. Do you guys eat before the cameras roll? Well, thankfully, yes. Right. Yeah, the red carpet takes a good 90 minutes. Yeah, right. and I suppose John John Wood's not going to look good heaving down a steak on telly, is he? <laughs> Sergeant Corden. Yeah. Didn't see. I saw Maggie Doyle, though. Lisa McCune was there. Lisa McCune was everywhere. She was splashed in every news article I saw. She looked sparkling. Clint is joining us from Sydney. The TV Week Logie goes to... The TV Week Logie goes to... Goes to... The gold. Logie winner is... Larry Emder. He was on the show last week and he joins us again this morning after 8 o'clock. I'm so glad Harry got it. I mean, Harry, bloody Larry. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) What's your name? Larry. Congratulations on the gold. Coming on, but Larry Emder. I, just, I was Team Larry. So was I. I just feel like you know what he's been in the industry and like radio and TV are very similar. Ruthless. Yeah, he's been in the industry for a thousand years, and he said um, he's the most axe man in television. But he hasn't actually been axed. Just a lot of shows he's worked on has been axed. Yeah, I love. Which gives me hope. Clint, he told us last week he used to, <laughs> he hosted. Was it Celebrity Dog School? Yeah. And they oh. had celebrities come on to see whose dog was the most obedient. But behind the scenes secret, they rented dogs for celebrities who didn't have them. <laughs> what? You can't be doing that. <laughs> so when you're on there going, Lassie, 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 and Lassie's not running towards you, no shit. Lassie's never met you before in her life. Yeah, and Lassie's real name is Max. Yeah. <laughs> He yeah. was great on Prices Right, though. Bring Wasn't that back I any know. day. Oh, I, I can't know. wait to catch up with him later. I Neither love Larry. Hey, hey, I've just Clint spotted Howell Kate Ritchie. <gasps> she was Sydney. 10 out of 10 last night. My best she? dress. Kate yeah. Ritchie got my best dress. I thought she looked stunning. You try and drag her in when we play your package, actually. Sure. I would like to know who got home first. You or Kate oh. Ritchie? Okay. Um, I was 10 she 40, would have at least 10 46. No. Mm. Okay. Um, Clint, can I ask, what was on the menu Oh, the menu. Shall I pull it up quickly? Menu? The menu. Oh, the menu. menu. Wasn't oh, on the menu. menu. Oh, right, right. I trying to make who it designs it, whether it is a celebrity chef. Okay, so we started with a, this is alternating, a kingfish ceviche or a beef carpaccio. I had the kingfish. It was Yum. lovely. Question? Question. Question. As the meals come out, is it very much like a wedding? Like, do you look at Sarah Arbo and oh, go, yes. I'll swap you the fish yeah. if I get the beef or- like, Yeah, well, well, this is the issue because when the main came out, I was a little unsure because on one hand, you had the pan-seared toothfish, which Yum. looked amazing, by the way, or toothfish. the gold poached Millie Hill lamb. Now, this was a cut of lamb, which was had like a gold leaf 
<laughs> attached to it, it's which painted. didn't look it didn't look very appetising. It was it was okay. It was okay. Quick or bit of a photo on our socials. It looks yeah, chuck it yeah, up. I there sure was the aubergine it? for the uh, vegetarian friends in the room as well. I aubergine? Noticed, I noticed, uh, Is that an eggplant? Yeah, yeah that's an eggplant. <laughs> no I gold lacing. No tiramisu, but they had a cheese board. Off a dessert was a cheese board. Well, no, we had a, we had a dessert platter, so a variation oh, of three mini desserts or whatever they call it. and a cheese platter after that. Oh, wow. Well, you're there for 10 hours, so you need at least no, four no. courses. I've been to a wedding before where they rolled out cheeseburgers at about 11 o'clock to sober good. everyone up. That's a great idea. I should have done that during one of the ad breaks. Yeah. That's hey, strong. Quinty, just quickly, um, firstly, was it easy to get a drink or do they make it difficult now because I don't want people well, to get Well, you've booze. been, Lauren, and I think you've been as well, Jace. but what happens is... The, the room is locked when the show is live, right? So, mm. for the three and a half minutes they're in commercial breaks, they have a, a sea of waiters. They just open the doors, boom, and for the next three and a half minutes, they're manically going around filling up glasses. Mm. People are shoving glasses in faces. People are running to the, the toilets. They've got a shot clock, which basically counts down from three minutes 30 all the way down. So, you've got three minutes 30 to do whatever you want. And then the seat fillers come in and sit oh, in the, the seats seat of the fillers. people who are locked in the toilets during the, the thing so that it doesn't look empty. Hang on. so wh- There's like- people who get dressed up in ball gowns and they literally go in and when the door's shut to say the show's about to come back on, they have to take an empty seat. Was there about 90% of the room seat fillers? Because there was a lot of people I didn't recognise last night. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Um, did, you, you from? did you follow my suggestion and wear a camel backpack under your tuxedo? I didn't, Jace. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I was well behaved, as I said. But there were there were plenty of people who weren't. Plenty of people who, um, who I believe, kicked on until the very hours of the, uh, early hours of this morning. Well, Clint hit record on the old iPhone and caught up with a few at the start of the night. I'm here with Sarah Arbo. So what's the plan of attack? How do we attack the night knowing full well we both need all to nighter. be all nighter obviously oh. no what? all nighter it's not even in question what is the point of leaving and then going to sleep for an hour and then rocking up to work I just don't see the point Nova Buddy Mel Tresina. it feels like the Olympics of television <laughs> and we're seeing who's taking home the gold who's taking home the silver and who's taking home the dinner rolls <laughs> which will be you and I Clint because we're not nominated Andy and Beck yeah. stars of the nice. show yeah the Blues are up by 31 oh. points <laughs> Are they really? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's well, you could you could be playing in September. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to have Coyote sitting on my lap for the first hour. Of, Forget about gold. Forget about gold. <laughs> if the Blues get up, you'll see a huge triumph. I'll go, yeah. It might be when they're reading out, you know, the the best documentary and it's about some horrific incident, <laughs> war-torn countries. You'll see me go, yeah. With Australian television royalty here, Denise Drysdale, a.k.a. Ding Dong. That's me, that's me. Now, 50 years ago, you picked up a gold bogey. No, it was um, one of the most thrilling things because the year before I won the gold logie, I had the arse out of my pants. <laughs> and how, I was much, getting, how much of the arse? I was arse? getting the tram to work. <laughs> to work on on the Tonight Show. And so I went from that to a gold logo, so you can imagine what it was like. It was a thrill of a lifetime. Just a bum cheek or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Denise Drysdale. Ding dong, Ding dong. Drysdale. Ripped the ass out of her pants. Is that what she just said? <laughs> That's what she said. She's, she's loose. Oh, yeah. Oh, she yeah, loves a good time. You get, you get a licence to do what you want. She's she's responsible for one of the biggest blow-ups behind the scenes on Studio 10 as well. What happened? Oh, yeah, she really threw her toys and got into the little shampoos when they were filming something off-site one day. Really? What, at 10 yeah. o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Um, I'd need a few to go on Studio 10 as well, to be honest. Um, you know what was great? I saw Denise Scott was there last night. Yes. And I love her. And she's been unwell, so it was great to see her there. Oh, good on her. Last night. I love uh, her. She's so funny. So fun night, Clint? It was good. No, it was good. It, always very long. <laughs> Feels like um, long. feels like no one made a fool of themselves well, last night, which is well, a not shame. that we've heard about yet. I'm yeah. sure they would have. There was a um, there was a a very strange moment very quickly when Channel Nine and sixty minutes won for an investigation into Ben Robert Smith. Oh, and of course the Logies broadcast on the Seven Network, and he used to be a general <laughs> yes. manager MD. of Channel Seven. Yeah, mm. that went down well. Yeah, there were a few moments of grilling <laughs> Channel Seven that went down well. <laughs> Sam, Sam Pang was very very funny. He was great. There was an actress there 
last night that I saw on the red carpet and I was like, I didn't know she was still in the biz. And one year I went to the Logies and I went into Channel 9 wardrobe to return my dress and this actress had also returned her outfit at the same time and as she walked out, they hung the dress up and they opened up her handbag to make sure she hadn't left anything (gasps) in it. She'd left many things in there. What, what, What was in it? What was in it? Just Things a giant cloud of been in talcum there. powder emerged from the handbag. Was that it? It's like magic. Yeah. And I saw it and I thought, oh, there she is. wonder what's in her bag. Yeah, I remember the wardrobe girls what just TV being like, show oh, was she on? God, yeah, what, what do TV we do show? with this? What TV show? Give us a, come on. I, actually, I don't know what she was on. Yeah, right. She was, she got, she got, she got scary that night. Channel 9 saw or 7? Her, saw her in the hallways of- um, Border Patrol? In the hallways of Crown in the early hours. And well, she was angry. She couldn't find a handbag. <laughs> I need my talk about her. I have chafe. Our next guest is one of the toughest athletes around. He's got a pro boxing record of 3-0 and is an Olympic medalist. Do you win from the blue? Yeah! Off the air, Jace was saying he can take him. So, everyone, welcome to the show, Harry Garside. And also, Harry, here's the bell. We're looking for a knockout. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that backfired. Harry Garside! <laughs> welcome to the studio. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me in. And welcome home. I know. It's been like four days. I'm still getting over the jet lag a little bit. But I um, I had about 10 beers at the footy with my dad last night. So, yes. we, uh, we did enjoy it and I slept like a baby last night. That's one way to help sleep like a baby, <laughs> yeah. isn't oh, it? Um, so, you've only been back from Paris for four days. What did you do when when you were out of the games in Paris? Yeah, it's quite interesting. Boxing usually goes for the two weeks. So obviously I planned on staying in comp for the whole time, but I was out quite early. So I got like 10 days to, to sort of eat bad food and, and, and have some red wine and spend some time with family and friends. And, and me and Stanners had a, had a good night out and uh, we had a bit of fun on that night. Mum was getting on the uh, the porn star martinis. Which was she was. Good. Can, you, can you do a dramatised reenactment of how your mum ordered the drinks in the bar, please? Another porn star for the porn star. <laughs> I'm like, mum, jeez, we're in public. Turn to your parents... Your parents are electric. I loved spending that dinner with them. They look like a lot of fun. Can I just quickly add to that? So after dinner, now keeping in mind, I had to be up very early the next morning to yep. report on, I don't know where I was going. Oh, the rock the climbing or something. Probably the climbing. <laughs> yeah, the peak, anyway, peak there was a group of six or seven of us. The old nightclub situation. Do you remember this, Harry? Uh, we briefly, went to a yes. nightclub. Four got in, three didn't. Oh, who didn't get in? Who didn't in? get in? I didn't get him. <laughs> oh, not in those shoes, we champ. Him. We left him. Why? Did, did you leave him? <laughs> they left me. What about the bro code? I, I think I, I did. I, I did come back out tonight. Scotty oh. didn't want to come. One of our good mates, Scotty, Scotty Bradley, he didn't want to go back out. I'm like, I've got it. I can't, mate. They're here for me. Yeah, you I've can got leave to, clean. I can do the right so thing. So who else didn't get in? Did mum and dad get in? Nah, they yeah, no, they, they were they were out. To be I honest. was going to say the way Mum was ago. ordering drinks, she can't get in. I think she was still. I think she's still at the cocktail yeah, bar right, right now. <laughs> oh my hey, gosh! Um, hey, we played uh, some of your post fight interview before, and um, I actually played the. I've got three young boys, uh, ten, eight, and two. But the ten and the eight year old actually played the interview to them during the games. For how I, I don't think I've ever seen someone just be so raw and honest mm. in a moment like that, mate. Um, bringing up mental health, uh, the fear of how you're going to feel over the next couple of weeks and stuff like that. In the clip, you say, you know, you've let everyone down. In no way did you let everyone down. Mm. You were an absolute inspiration over there, Harry. Yeah, it's, um, I think the, the highs and lows of sport, the, the raw emotion, I definitely do find myself at times chasing that sometimes, like to actually feel in my body and... In that moment, obviously, looking back in retrospect, it was pretty painful and pretty tough when you're in it. But like, looking. Did you have back, a lot of people like, reach out? Though? You must open your DMs and oh, just been like, "It's it's honestly unbelievable." Like, I feel like I'm like it's weird to lose and fail and get a massive hug from Australia. It's very strange, yeah. you know? and I definitely feel that. Did you feel that because that um, interview was played so many times uh, in Australia while you were in France? You probably maybe don't understand the gravity of, yeah. of of how much that meant to people hearing because we learn so much more in defeat than we do in winning quite often. And I think you taught kids so much more than any gold medalist could in that moment. It was quite amazing. Yeah, that's and that's a big thing for me. I know growing up, like, I thought that, like, success was always going to be the thing that would, like, make me feel better about myself. But I don't know, like, I've... I remember sitting in, in quarantine after Tokyo bronze medal and that was a success, right? I wasn't expected to do that. And I sat there and I still looked at myself in the mirror and I was still unhappy. 
And it's like compare that to- compare that to the moment after you open your DMs and took all the feedback from what you said. That's the thing, right? Like, it's like you no success or no I know, materialistic thing, no thing outside your body will make you feel better about yourself. And I want mm. young people to sort of realize that. Although it is important to like go on these long journeys and, and in that journey, you'll realize like how big you can and how capable and how, I don't know, strong you are throughout that journey. And I have learned that throughout my Olympic process, but like no gold medal or no so, winning or no money will actually change anything. Yeah. Since Tokyo, Harry, you spent sort of the best part of three years visualizing winning gold, right? Visualization was such a big thing. So how does the mind work post Paris? You're 27 years of age. What are you, what are you thinking about now? Or is it too early to start thinking about... Not so much what's next, but how you get your head around the next challenge. Are you 27? Just turned 27, yeah. We're old. Oh, Jesus, I hate young, successful people. <laughs> we really need to get our lives in order, Loz. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Um, that's a good question, Clint. I I don't really know what's next. I, I find myself having little moments where I'm back in my body and I actually mm. feel emotion, which is nice, but mm. I feel like I have very much disconnected from myself a little bit since I lost. So I... Um, each but that's day. okay. That's I think we all do. Yeah. Of course, I think it's it's a weird thing like feeling that, and sometimes when I watch that interview, it takes me back in like that post match, that intensity. Yeah. Uh, but I think once I felt that and I did it in public, there was like something that just came over my body. It was like, oh, you can't do that again. Like just mm. like sort of yeah. like just, and I've gone into autopilot. So I think um, as I said, each day that goes by, I'm staying with my family now, so I can sort of be myself a bit more around them. And I don't know. I feel like I'm getting back into my body slowly, and then when I do that, I think I can figure out what's next. Do you get back in the room? Like, are you training do you, or are you just having a rest? Always train. I love Always to train. Training. Yeah, yeah. I love to train. I think Same. it's more so for my mind, to be honest. <laughs> I've got a crazy manic mind. Um, so I, I always love to train. Always try and do one, maybe two sessions a day and then um, mm. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just thinking about kids, right, who play sport. And there's been this kind of movement recently, and I don't have kids, so I might be wrong here, where like sports doesn't have a winner and a loser. But is it important? as kids and growing up to learn that you don't win all the time. Do you yeah. think that's important? A hundred percent. Like life will knock you down a number of times and sometimes it's your fault and sometimes it's not. And I think, um, I don't know, I think it's really important to get in the arena and sometimes have hardcore embarrassment, hardcore failure and feel that mm. and then get back up and sort of dust yourself off eventually. And I know strive for something bigger and in that process you realize how capable and how big you are and how strong you are. And I don't know, sometimes you need life to just level you and humble you and sit you on your ass. And I yeah. felt that, right? It's like, but I will get better. I'll get back up. I'll shoot for something bigger. And I want I want young people, obviously, to be scared of failure, but, like, know that it's inevitable, right? It is exactly. just all And it's part not of the it. end of the world. Because there'd be a lot of kids in cars right now on the way to school who might not have won footy or sport on the weekend who would be feeling pretty flat. What would you say to them? How you perform in sports or in any profession that you choose to do doesn't change who you are as a person. Although it is really important to get into the arena and have a crack. There you go. Mm. Um, what I love, because you've got the book, Harry Garside, The Good Fight, is out. Um, You're an author, Harry. How about that, mate? I can't even read. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just reading the, I'm reading the crayon writing right now. <laughs> What is I this love, an AI job? Hey, this, is, this is awesome. I'm going to use this as a tip. You know how it's like all your mates would normally be like, give us a shout out in the book, give us a shout out. He's put, for those in my inner sanctum, you know who you are. <laughs> that's yeah. very broad. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, you won't offend anyone with so that. So when your mate Barry rings and he's like, did I get a shout out? You're like, yeah, sure, mate, you're, you're in the inner sanctum. Inner sanctum. And for sure. anyone who's grabbing life by the horns, keep it up. Yeah. It's a good message. Good but you. Harry, what? I asked you this in the moments after Paris. I said, is your heart full? And I loved your response. Is your heart full right now? Oh, that is a good question, Clint. Um, it is, actually. I um, Throughout the process, I woke up on New Year's Day and I... Olympic year, no relationships, no nothing, all gold medals, and I actually fell in love throughout that process. So, um, my partner is currently living in London, so oh. I am currently partially like not full because she is away from mm. me. But oh, you're the, up. At the same time, I I am pretty madly in love. Like I, and I think oh. in that, like love is way more important than sport. And how long have you been together? It's very fresh. Yeah. Oh, was this was this oh, a no Tinder job when you were overseas? For so long. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little Tinder job. No, she, the she's Australian, which is nice. And I and I met her on New Year's Eve, so um, I've known her all this year, and and she's sort of been there throughout the highs and lows. But yeah, I'm, I can't wait for her. She was gets back so? in November. Which hey, is was this, if it was New Year's Eve, was this like a, oh, it's eleven fifty nine? I'm just going to happen <laughs> to stand next to her <laughs> yeah. when that clock hits midnight. She was, good, she was a good looker, but I actually Please. left before midnight because I wanted to wake up uh, <laughs> that fresh. morning and be Olympic year. So, but she's broken my heart because I've got a massive 
massive man crush yeah. on Harry Garside. <laughs> so everyone's got a crush on I, Harry um, Garside. And you're also a ballerina. Oh, a very average one. I feel sometimes I'm like, I've done like maybe 60 <laughs> classes in my life. So people classify me as a ballerina. I'm like, oh, I'm so, so sure. Works I'm for the rolling headline. with it. I'm <laughs> rolling with it. Just quickly, um, give us a snapshot of the book. Harry Garside, The Good, lo- uh, the good Fight. For me, it was just all of, uh, it's like very much about my search for my manhood and the lessons that I've learned in that. I felt, what do we see on movies? What do we see on our TV screens growing up? We see this big, tough bloke and that's what you have to live up yeah. to, right? And I think it was my search for my manhood and then realizing that I think manhood comes in many different forms. And then in that, just like my growth throughout that and discovering that. And it's like, I think there's lessons for obviously young boys and, and, and men, but definitely for all people as well. Hey, at the risk of sounding like Maura from Good Morning Australia, good mm. Father's Day gift. Great Ooh. Father's Day Father's gift. Nice. Did, you Father's do the, Day? did you do the audio book? <laughs> Did but you record it? I'm not going to lie. I did try, Clint, but I definitely just to get, did get reminded that I can't read. So <laughs> right, I, um, You I wrote the book. You can't be good I, I at everything. Book, you can't sat, read your own writing? Honestly, Could be it, was, it was actually really hard. I'm not going to lie. I sat there for 45 minutes to try to get through Don't expect me to read page. it if you can't read it. <laughs> there was an audio book version. I just didn't read it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Prince Harry didn't do his <laughs> no, either. No, good call. Oh, no, he call. did do his own, didn't oh, no. he? Britney Spears didn't do yes, hers. Yes, thank you. We love Britney. Yeah, we love Britney. Leave Britney alone. Um <laughs> Harry Garside, the good fight. Harry, welcome back to Australia. You did us bloody proud over there, mate. Let's Love you, Harry. It. Thanks, Heath, guys. Good on you, mate. All right. Good morning, Melbourne. Still to come. Gold Logie winner Larry Emda is going to be joining us on the air. I love Larry. And I've got something that I'm still Aussie in. Aussie legend. Still in two minds on whether I admit. Oh, to Larry? No, to you guys. Something happened on the weekend, and I'm scared if I tell you, they might take my kids. Wouldn't be the first time that you, no no sorry kids haven't been taken off you before it wouldn't be the fir- first time we've thought that perhaps they gotcha. should be yeah right yeah, yeah. Uh, before you- we get to that though let's go to Endeavour Hills playing uh, the five k question this morning is Mel good morning morning Mel good morning how was your weekend oh it was brilliant enjoyed the sunshine lovely wasn't yeah. it so nice it was supposed to be awful in Melbourne and it was lovely all weekend bloody freezing this oh, morning no. all right Mel uh, oh you're a Saints fan nice little win on the weekend. Yes, it was good. It was good. Very happy to see that, although we turned it out half-time, turned it off half-time thinking they're going to lose. Oh, <laughs> so you're a true supporter. All right, Mel, do you want to go easy question for 50 bucks, medium question for 500, or roll the dice and go for 5K? 5K, please. Yeah. Let's go. $5,000. You'll get a question from Lauren. You'll get three seconds to answer. Yep. Are you ready, Mel? Ready. For five thousand dollars here comes your question you good to go ready yep who won back-to-back logie gold logies in 2007 and 2008 three two one oh, who did you say lisa McEwen? no it was kate ritchie but lisa McEwen did win four back-to-back gold logies between 1997 and the year 2000 but Kate Ritchie oh. won back-to-back gold logies in 2007 and 2008. And last night, she got my best dress on the red carpet. Yeah, she looked a million bucks. She would have won that for Home and Away. Yeah, Home and yeah. Away. Yep. Hey, uh, Mel, thanks for giving it a crack, mate. But no cigar. Thanks, guys. No Sorry, drama. Hey, sorry, Mel. Oh, my God. I'm, I can't get anyone's names right today. Sorry, Mel. Not Kate. Jace. You're Jason. Clint. Clint. Yep. Yep, you got it. Yep, there we go. <sighs> hey, uh, Monday morning. Got Monday itis. I'll tell you what, no one's going to be more shabby than our next guest. He picked up gold last night. He was so confident he wasn't going to win. He made the statement that he would get the other nominee's initials tattooed on his butt this morning. <laughs> Let's see if he's going to go through with it. We're about to be joined by the Gold Logie winner. Larry Emder, who took it out last night. How's he looking this morning, Larry? Don't know yet. We're waiting for proof of life. I haven't seen a photo of Larry holding today's paper. So. I'm tipping he's still in his suit from I last s- night. I saw him pop up on Sunrise before and he was looking a little dishevelled. Fair yeah, enough. Right. Good on him. Well, you do what you want with that gold, Logie. Just before we get to him, I um, <sighs> found an interesting 24 hours. Saturday night, uh, we had some Indian takeaway at our place. Mm-hmm. Yum. I couldn't convince the family. To get involved. No one was interested. And I said, you know what? You've got to agree on a takeaway. You can't all be getting different dinners. Well, we did that night. We what did went, everyone else have? We went rogue. The what? kids had like leftovers and Lou, Lou just made something at home. And I was like, no, I want oh, takeaway. you wanted Indian. I wanted Indian. Was that a, a hangover remedy? No, no, no. No, I just I just felt like Indian. So I tucked oh, into the geez, chicken tikka tikka masala. Chicken tikka masala? Yep. You can never say that right. That's why I ordered through the app. 
Um, got so you some, don't have to call and say ticka 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 masala because yep. you can't spit. You got it. Uh, ticka ticka masala. Got some garlic naan, and then oh, Sunday morning stop. when we woke up, Lou goes, "Have you brushed your teeth?" I said, "Yeah, oh. why?" And she goes, "You're radiating garlic." Oh, it's yeah. Coming, sometimes that can stick around. Yeah, it's coming through like <laughs> your skin through your pores. And then yesterday it hit me. What? I got food poisoning. Oh, are you sure it wasn't gastro? No, like it wasn't. No, 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 no one in the family's got it. It's not gastro. It's definitely linked to that. Ugh. It was definitely the Indian takeaway. You take know away. when you've got food poisoning. Yeah, I trust exactly me. Exactly what it was. I knew. Especially it. after an Indian meal. <laughs> uh, I once got it off pork belly at the MCG. And oh, I don't have you never pork looked belly at pork me. belly the same ever again. So anyway, um, I'm powering through the day. We had people around for lunch, so I Why did you have people around for lunch? I was already lunch? locked in. It was Lou's family, so I was out cooking, and then oh, I ducked right. into the bathroom. For you had a- to cook while you had food poisoning? Yeah. Oh, hell no. You can't smell food for at least 24 hours. And then Lou goes, hey, um, can you change Archie? Oh, no, not today, Lou. Give me a break. Well, she was off doing something with the other kids. So I was like, okay, done. And, like, you know, at this point, you know when you go on waves, you're like, I think I've come good. You know that, you know I've that clean. Good. I've come good. Uh, yep, I've started that movie. <laughs> so I lay Archie down on the bed. <laughs> Not from food poisoning. <laughs> Put a towel down, lay Archie oh, no. down on the bed. Oh, no. One of you's pooed yourself. <laughs> Both of them might have pooed themselves. I'm changing Archie. And he's now wearing, oh, no. he's wearing these little pull-ups. Did we have a situation? So as I'm sliding on the pull-up. Sliding, like so, it's like 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 pant nappies. Oh, pulling it up, like they're yeah. pant oh, no, nappies. Velcro. Or, yeah, he's Did you put d- one on too? No, he's laying down. <laughs> it didn't fit. He's laying down. I said, "Lift your bum." So you know how like you push down on your feet to lift your bum up, like, 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 like a bridge, like a bridge, right? Mm. He's done that, and as I'm sliding the nappy up, he's lost grip on the bed, and one leg given way and hit me square in the stomach. In the stomach or in the nerds? In the stomach. In D's nerds. Without a second passing. Did you throw up on him? Yeah. <gasps> you th- Did you spew on him? You chunded on the child. I vomited on my baby. He's two and a half. He's old enough to remember that. He burst into tears. I then burst into tears. So we're both sitting there covered in vomit, crying Put them at in each the other. shower. He was covered in yesterday's chicken tikka masala. <laughs> chicken tikka masala all over my two. <laughs> and the bed sheets? Gone. I put a towel down. Oh. I'm like, he's like, oh. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Daddy didn't need to vomit on you. I'm so sorry. Oh. And then did you just get in the shower all together and be like, let's just wash the day away? No, I had to go I'm- finish cooking lunch for everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> nah, that's a put yourself to bed, Sitch. Oh. He'll remember that. He's old enough to remember. Well, I bloody remember it. He's not a baby anymore. So I've got to live he's to it. He's a kid. <sighs> oh. Poor little thing. He smells like garlic naan now, too. When I go to give him a cuddle goodnight, I'm like, you smell like naan bread. Big night last night at the Logie Awards, and especially for our next guest who took out gold. And the gold Logie goes to Larry Emder. 40 years I've been in this business, 40 years, and I did say that if I won this during the week, I did say, I was so convinced that I wasn't going to win this that I said that if I did win it, I would have all the nominees' initials tattooed on my ass live tomorrow morning. <laughs> Joining us from a tattoo Uh-oh. parlor in Sydney <laughs> with his pants Uh-oh. down, Larry Emder. Larry, Larry, congrats. <laughs> pants down, Larry, as I'm now. No, I'm <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just take us to where you are right now. Have we even had a shower and freshened up yet, or have we gone all the way through? No, 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 no. We, well, because we've got the morning show and no one wants to do a carl. So I, um, yes, I've we had do. A <laughs> I had a couple hours sleep, and I, I'm I'm good. I'm ready to go. I've got a, a, a tattoo artist I've seen walking around the studio, getting set up. So it's going to be it's going to be a big morning. Are you actually doing it? Yeah, I've got to do it. Well, I said, you know, I've got to keep my promise. But it was a stupid, stupid promise in retrospect. But I gave myself zero chance of this. So, so it was. Um, so the, do you even know the other nominee? Do you know what your tattoo is going to say? Oh, I know how you can write Bob. <laughs> um, well, they look good in prison. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I think, no, I haven't really. Uh, to be honest, I've got a, I've got another TV commitment in a minute. Then I'm going oh. to sit, with, sit and have a cup of tea with the uh, tattoo artist and just talk, have a little chat about it. Oh, a design meeting. <laughs> it's, a, it's what we call a design meeting. I'd go the lower back. Are you going to have to sit on one of those inflatable donuts for a week? Because my friend's got yes. a tattoo on his bum of um. Of someone's autograph, and he couldn't sit down for a few days. Really, 
Really? You might be standing up for the morning show for the rest oh. of the week. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll be maybe I'll be doing that. <laughs> hey, hey, Larry. You, you you joked about being the most axed man in television. You're also yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the, one one of the most lovely men in television. Yeah. Worked with you back in the Channel Nine days. Um, are you chuffed this morning? I can't believe it. I, I just I, I I'm I'm standing here looking at these two things, and I just can't believe it. Honestly, um, it was the the silver one was such a huge surprise to me, uh, and then gold I I, I can't even. Um, I'll, I I just want to sit down tonight and. Look at no. it work through, work it backwards. But honestly, um, uh, it's it's such a huge, yeah, the, the, the biggest thrill of my career, and that's been a long career. So. Well, you, mate, you deserved it. You know, we had you on the show last week, and we're saying we've grown up watching you on telly. Yeah, you know, like a staple you, in and, Australian. And, and, and let's be honest, TV and radio it can be a ruthless industry, and for you to have the career you've had and still be in it is unbelievable, mate. It was so well deserved. Oh, thank you. That that really means a lot to me. And thank you to all your listeners if you if you voted for me. If you didn't vote for me, then whatever but um <laughs> well i asked you when you were on the other day how to vote and you, you had no idea tell us. <laughs> well uh, you know and it's really interesting i think that's why i didn't think that i was in the game because you know i, I said to channel seven when they first told me about the nomination i said well I'm not doing that vote for me vote for me thing yeah. i said i'll take the mickey out of it and stay true to the sort of messaging that i would do which is actually you know ridiculous and silly and yep. taking the piss out of myself um so that's why i didn't think that was you know half a chance but um I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's just such a thrill. Oh, really. we're so, Sylvie oh. said she, if you won, she was melting down your logies to design some jewellery. Has she got her designs underway already? I, when, I got, when I got into bed last night, she was uh, Googling uh, metal smelters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, just quickly, I, think, I think that's what she was Googling. I know you got to go, but when you checked into the hotel, I believe there was a mood killer in the room. What was uh, it? That, what was that, it? that they'd given Larry a gift in his hotel room just before the Logies. I saw you post oh, yes, on social. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, they'd wrapped up a towel like a little and stuck my head on it, um, oh. and it was like it was like Chucky a uh, Chucky doll. <laughs> and you know, that'll you, do. You know it. when you get you know when you, when you get into a hotel room, you, you you know you're away and it's kind of like okay, we'll have a glass of champagne and we're yes. here and this is kind of cool and sexy. Um, and it was a beautiful hotel room, and then you walk around the corner to the bed, and there's this little Chucky doll with like a <laughs> in the head. So that was that was the boot kill. Larry, just very quickly, I've got to apologise. I actually oh, ducked yes. out. <laughs> it's Clint Stanaway here. Clint was oh. in bed. <laughs> oh, I bailed. I bailed before the. Oh, mate, you're a smart man. I would have done the same. <laughs> <laughs> he missed your speech, Larry. What a dog! Imagine that if Larry took it out and they're like, "Oh, he's gone to bed." We'll uh, we'll cross to his room. <laughs> hey, um, yeah, yeah. Larry, congratulations Congrats. from everyone here at Nova, mate. Uh, well deserved. Well deserved. Oh, guys, thank you and thank you Good for you, all your support over the years. Really do appreciate it. Thanks, Good on you. Always. There he goes. We love Larry Emda. Gold Logie winner Larry Emda. This you know, starts the campaign to bring back the price. Right. Cliffy. Remember Cliffy? Yeah, we did that to him. You know, we interviewed Larry the other day and we hung up. I was like, he's 60. He he's looks great. I forgot about this. Do you know he's from the Men's Health alumni? Oh, yes. we know. We discussed it when you weren't on the <laughs> other yep. day, Clint. Yep. And I'll tell you what, Lauren was sitting there with her head in that magazine for a good hour afterwards. I, I love you, Clint Stanaway, but Larry's got you covered. Did brother. he come on down when you get home? Excuse me? <laughs> like, like, were you watching Prices <laughs> Right? What? I mean, were you, like, we were watching Prices Right when you got Commercials. Home. Okay. We're going to the... <laughs> Why is the computer not firing? There it is. Thank God. <laughs> we're heading off on book week this week. I know. Some, uh, I know but my is kids... Is it all different days? Yeah, my kids' school is until September, but there are a lot this week. I, I saw a few pop up on socials, and I was actually... <laughs> I was listening to Nova on Saturday morning when mm. I was out doing the basketball games with the boys, and Jamie Rowe was on, and he spoke to a dad. Have a listen to how competitive he was. Building costumes for book week and going rollerblading. Oh, back it up. Well, shout out to all the parents for doing book week. Yeah, it's pretty competitive. We've won the last two years, so. Oh, really? Going for a third year running. So. You're, you're one of those parents. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> We've won the last two what years. What do you win? Is it a competition? Oh, amongst parents, mate. Everything's really? a competition amongst parents. As you know, my um, sister-in-law and, and stepbrother and their little boy, Ned, are living with me at the moment, so we've had book week main here in our house sorting the costumes. Oh, you so, would have had your input too, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while since I've read a book, to be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> what 
character of the Goosebumps are you going to go one, as? The last book the I read. The Babysitter's Club. <laughs> the last book I read was Evelyn Hugo and her seven husbands or something. So, Ooh. <laughs> Don't know what that is. Makes sense. Maybe was, I'll have seven husbands. Obviously, one that didn't day. make the top sellers list. All right, let's That's end That's a ripping s- book. Okay. All right. It's not appropriate to wear to primary school, though. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, you brought in seven girls from a year. Well, you know, they're my seven husbands and mine. I've got my seven husbands. <laughs> Snova with Jason Lauren at Mount Fuller. Snova! Hey, guys, we are doing Snova. That's right, we are taking the show to Mount Buller. September is the perfect time to learn how to ski. So head to Mount Buller with the family these spring holidays. We're going to take care of the lot as well. Uh, Accommodation transfers, all your ski hire, we will sort out. How good. This is going to be fun because we start ringing people back tomorrow. We do. And if we ring you... We'll FaceTime you. You've got 30 seconds to have ski gear on. So I would just be wearing it in case we FaceTime. And if you're dressed and ready to go in 30 seconds, you're coming with us. So you have cool. to register via the Nova Player app or you can register at novafm.com.au. And then, yeah, you have to ha- carry some sort of ski gear with you, whether it's goggles, a helmet, a beanie, gloves and a scarf. And like Loss said, if we, full kit. we will video call people on that list. And if you answer and in a matter of seconds you get snow gear on, boom. You and a friend are coming to the snow with us. <laughs> I can't us. wait to do this. Neither Jace, can I. Do you ski? I what have do you ski- think? I'm only, I'm or only, are you a toboggan guy? <laughs> well, I grew up on the Gold Coast, um, so I've only seen the snow twice. Mm. And okay, I, this is going to be fun. I did take to the slopes. They, everyone just started screaming pizza at me, and I was like, yes, yeah. please, yes, please. Pizza and french fries, that's how yes. you learn. I didn't realise that means put your Turn skis... Turn your skis in like a pizza. Oh, I thought we are calling stop. it a day and going for food. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you would have pray hard. I almost Clint, went off the side ski? of a cliff. I ski. I can't board. Oh, no, I can't board either. I tried a couple of times and well, I just ended up with a bruised butt and a yeah, bruised ego. Yeah, when you ego. fall, it's hard to get back up. I might the take whole on. thing's a bit hard when you fall, isn't it? It is. I might take on some of the jumps. Oh. So- <laughs> Can you please? No. Can you no. please? No. We're not Jace doing that. He's going to take on the jumps. Is there a half pipe there I can have a hern on? Is that what they call it? Half. What's wrong with you? How, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> Not that much, mate. Guys, I've been on the road for the best part of four weeks and I can't tell you how excited I am to be back with you oh in the flesh gosh. tomorrow morning. You're back in Australia, Clinton. You're in Sydney. You haven't quite made it to us yet. But tomorrow we get to see you in real life. So IRL, that's what the kids say. So you'll arrive on the domestic terminal. Yes, domestic, That's so don't, please don't be there. The break please don't. dancing flush bomb. Yeah, good food um, court there. Mm. So I've been living out of a suitcase and in hotels for the best part of four weeks. Got here to Sydney a couple of days ago, checked into the star, and the lovely man at check-in asked me where I've arrived from. I said, I've just arrived from Paris. I'm quite tired. And he goes, wow, sir. I'm going to give you an upgrade. I'm like, oh, sweet. Because you got what upgraded on the plane as well. You are the upgrade king. I I've never got an upgrade in my whole life. Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't upgrade you. No, but I even wear like nice clothes to the airport and the slim what? chance in hell they'll upgrade me. <laughs> That's What's what my nice parents clothes? used to say, dress well and you might get an upgrade. I'm like, what? <laughs> Absolute nonsense. They're not looking going, if you dress too nicely, then they go, well, you can afford to pay <laughs> for What's the upgrade. What's nice clothes? <laughs> my new Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> You can't be wearing Crocs at the airport. They're not in. They're not airport attire. Well, I've noticed they're not a lot of people class wearing UGG boots at the airport. So oh. have I. UGG boots are sort of turned the, the half cut UGG with the heel yeah. out at the back. Oh it's yeah, I know the quite one. Quite bougie. Kendall Jenner started wearing it. Now everyone's wearing. Sorry, that's a home job jeans. or a quick run to the survey. Oh, even that. That's pushing it. So the upgrade at the star, I went from being, well, I assume being in a small hotel room to a suite, if you don't oh. mind. It was it was far too big. It was room for so many activities in oh there. And God, trust me, there were no activities. Did you have like a lounge room? A separate I had a lounge room. room. Oh. had a dining table. A Living. dining room table? Dining room table, lounge room, bar. Who have uh, you got coming around? Well, that's a, the that's a thing. I had Thanks nobody coming around. But I also had a flash toilet. Now, the toilet, when you open the door to the toilet, the seat automatically sprung up. They have that in some of the rooms at Crown. What do you mean? The seat's heated. So it automatically opens. The seat is warm. Yeah, it's got a sensor. The seat is heated. Now, a function that in all of my... You know, it's a Toto. Toto toilet. It's a Toto. It's my dream to have a Toto toilet. See, I used to toilet the other day near Woolies and the seat was heated. You just called it a toilet. 
but I don't. I don't think it was plugged <laughs> it's into not anything. A toe-toe. I think Darren from bloody yeah. the loading dock had just used it. No, yeah, no, it's not a Toto. So the That's Toto is like the toilet of dreams, right? Yes. Now, I, in all of my forty-one years on this planet, I have never, ever decided to use the bidet function. Oh, quick little shot of water. What about Perry Nandos, our digital guy? He installed it. He installed one on his he home toilet. He bought one from Bunnings. <laughs> yeah, he installed Like the whole seat was removable and he installed it on his bloody toilet at home. It's got to be plugged into Can power. Can I tell you, I know why he's done it. How because the experience? that experience waiting for that, <laughs> little jet- that jet stream <laughs> of warm water was sort of one of the more... It was equally terrifying because I didn't know what to expect or where it was going. Could you hear the but thing then, coming out, the nozzle? Zzz, oh, yeah. You, you knew it was close. But there's many then, options because it has a remote control, right? Oh, yeah. And there's many options of there's shooting like a mist. directions. There's a mist or there's a more a firmer hose. Question? It's Question? like the hose when you put it on jet power or mist. Is it like playing Frogger? Like, have you got to find the target? <laughs> You, you know can, what I mean? You can move it forwards and backwards. That's what I mean. <laughs> like, oh, no. Do you no. know what, Jace? Well, that tickles. They found the target. Right. Um, one of the more extraordinary experiences, like, it, <laughs> I can see now why Perry Nandos is addicted. But here's my concern, right? Nandos, jump on the mic. Nandos took his current. <laughs> toilet seat off, went to Bunnings and bought this thing and connected on. So do you have a power cord going from your <laughs> toilet up to the vanity? I do, but it's only 30 centimetres away from no, the but toilet. Here's my question. So if your wife wants to use the hairdryer, she has to unplug, unplug the toilet. Every day. Yes, she's done that before and she's left it unplugged and I've gone to use it and I've gotten a very cold surprise. Oh, <laughs> oh so you still get the water, but it's not heated. Oh, that's, oh. Bad. that's bad for business. Oh, that is, that is bad for business. <laughs> Hey, uh, we are out of here. Uh, Loz, we need to get our flash mob and go to the airport. You're oh not. No, you're not. Clinty's coming back to Melbourne. One of those welcome back balloons. You That's know what? what I'm, I just, I'm just going to tell him. There's something waiting for you. Don't. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> There's something waiting for you. As in today or tomorrow? No, no, no. Just at the airport. We That's all we're saying. That's all no, we're saying. We I'm can't wait to see Sydney. you tomorrow. We cannot wait. I'm staying in Sydney. I can't <laughs> wait to tomorrow and go, hey, Clint, how was the arrival? <laughs> what? <laughs> You've been away for a month, Clinty. I, I'm dreading Put it this way. Time. Put it this way. It's not what we originally wanted. No. You would have died. How have you got my flight details? Wanted. But hang on. It's not far from the original plan, isn't it? Oh. It's probably better <laughs> than the original How's plan. How's this? Loz, if what Clint is about to land into today, if mm. we did that to you. I would never turn up again on this show. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. So have a good flight, Stannis. Guys, I'd be on fog, there is a fog issue here in Sydney. Oh. And the planes are not... <laughs> Taking off. We're it was good. foggy in Melbourne this morning, but it is clear as <laughs> day out there now. <laughs> uh, Clint's arrival back into Melbourne. We'll give you all the details on that tomorrow. We Trust me, you don't want to miss it. To see you tomorrow, Clint. Keep an eye on socials. Safe travels, brother. Have a great flight, mate. Love you. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> you imagine when the pilot comes on and goes, Tell you what, uh, we've actually made up a bit of time. We're going to be landing <laughs> early. He's going to be like, Please do a loop. Please do a loop. <laughs> We oh. will see you tomorrow, Stanners, in the flesh here in Melbourne. Dress nice, I reckon. Can't you're going to go. You're going to go. All. You might go viral, brother. So look what I'm <laughs> in the video. Dress nice, you might get an upgrade. We, uh, we will see you tomorrow. Mel is in next. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. It's going to be a good day. Jason Lawrence. Jason Lawrence. Feeling good on Nova 100. Jason Lauren. Follow them on socials. Nova.